Welcome to this video series in Learn Programming with C++. In this video, we're actually starting the video series by starting with the first topic on computers. More precisely, what is a computer? And even more precisely, what objects or what components inside of the computer we should be aware of as programmers? We, we, we should understand these objects as we might at one point have to work directly with them or at one point we might have to consider what they're doing in order to understand why something is not working or why something needs to be modified appropriately in order to function as we, we would like it to. So let's get started. I, I'm not very artistic, but I will do my best and I'm going to start with drawing off the first piece and this is what we call the central processing unit. And typically, is this little square inside the computer. And what this thing is, is it's supposed to do is it's, uh, it's, it's in charge of processing all kind of information. So think about any arithmetic, adding numbers, multiplying numbers. Think of any comparison. Is this number equal to that number? Any kind of operation that you require the computer to do has to go through this chip. And, he, and this chip will compute the answer and give you back the response. And we'll talk more about that in a few. And this is, I like to think of it as the brain. It, it, it's the thing that, that, you know, knows what to do with information. Okay, and then I'm going to draw another one here on the left called random access memory. And you've probably heard by the term RAM. RAM. And... What this, uh, one, one way that you can look at it is called a working memory. And think of as any, any kind of program that you're currently running on your computer or on your cell phone, on any kind of computer, anything that's currently running goes in RAM. So you're watching this video on a browser. Uh, you probably, maybe you're watching this video on the YouTube app on your cellular device. The YouTube app or your browser, they're currently right now in RAM and they are processing information. They are receiving data from the internet, which gets processed by the CPU, and then this information gets stored in RAM. And every time you, let's say you work on a document and you are typing in Microsoft Word, as you type, all that stuff that you're typing goes directly into RAM. And so the RAM is the working memory, is the stuff where whatever you're working on right now has to be put on in order to be worked with. And then we have another kind of memory, and this is called the hard, I mean, there's different kinds of, of uh, working memory, uh, but one of them is the, the hard drive. And usually the hard drive, the old hard drive, they had some kind of disk inside, and you know, you had a, a, little, a little needle that would go and put some kind of information in there. So this is called, we're gonna call it the hard disk drive. But nowadays, a lot of computers have SSDs, but this could also be such as USB drive, it could be an external hard drive, it can be a DVD, a CD, anywhere where you can actually store information that doesn't require you to have some kind of energy source in order for you to load it. With that being said, RAM, the moment that you turn off your computer, anything inside of RAM, it's gone. Whenever you turn off your computer, anything inside of the hard drive, it stays. And the next time you turn on your computer, all that information remains. With that being said, the memory in RAM is known as volatile memory. Volatile. And the memory in the hard drive is called as non-volatile. And that is because volatile is it's referring to as it requires energy in order for it to function. If it has no energy, then it, then it doesn't do anything. So in other words, the information inside of RAM is in the form of some electrical current. The moment there's no more electricity, all that information, it's gone. The last piece that I want to talk about is the motherboard. And the motherboard is, you know, it's a big bigger piece inside your computer. It has places to insert some kind of chips. It has places to install the RAM. It has a place to connect the the processor and then there's also other things inside of it depending on the type of motherboard some offer more features than others and then there's this other electrical component etc and this is of course we call I'm gonna label it as the mobile which is the motherboard and all of these components they are all connected to the motherboard in fact the motherboard I like to think of it as I like to think of it as the skeleton the skeleton of your computer and everything goes to the motherboard. 
similarly with the hard drive or any kind of hard drive and you can have multiple hard drives you can have two three whatever okay so now let's talk a little bit about the relationship among these different um, components inside the computer let's first talk about memory so as I said before RAM is volatile memory is memory that that right now holds information that you're going to be working on and the hard drive holds information that you can store away for later so that means that the hard drive has two purposes the first purpose the first purpose of the hard drive is just to store information so whenever you are working on a document and you hit save the moment that you hit save the this memory this this information which is in ram gets written into a physical form inside the hard drive so this is what does the the is the store and whenever you open a new document and you want to load and you want to see it then that's the reverse and instead of storing of course is your loading so the first the first uh, important aspect about the hard drive is that you want to store information the second thing and I'm gonna write it here on the right is used as a thing called virtual memory virtual memory now I'm not judging but I know there are some of you I know there are some of you I've seen it who likes to have a lot of Chrome tabs open Okay, if you have like 20 tabs open, 30 tabs open or more, all of those tabs are in memory. And as you are probably aware of, you have way less memory in RAM than you have in a hard drive. And so what happens when you try to have so many programs, have them open or so many documents open or so many things in memory, but you do not have enough space. Some of the systems, actually most of the systems nowadays, if you're running Mac, if you're running Windows, if you're running Linux, they have the concept of virtual memory. So what's going on is that the, actually the RAM, when it's running out of space, the operating system, in this case, let's say Windows, it's, it's smart enough to say, okay, this information in RAM is not being used. Why don't I go and I put it in the hard drive for some time? I'm going to leave it there for a little bit. And until it is requested, then I'll return it back into memory. So to give you an example, let's say you have 10 tabs in Google Chrome open and the 10th tab you haven't opened it in a while so Google Chrome says okay let me be smart about it and I'm going to remove everything from this tab and I'm gonna put it in the hard drive once you click on tab number 10 then Google will say oh I don't have that data no more let me go get it from the hard drive put it back in memory and then load it again of course that's gonna take some time and this is why as you run more programs at the same time your computer will start to slow down and if your hard drive is also very full then there isn't enough space for this exchange of data between the two um, between the two components uh, for it to happen so this is the the two purposes of the hard drive you want to store information in case you need to turn off your computer and you want and and automatically the system uses it as a way to have virtual memory or virtual RAM if you wanna if you will the other thing we have to talk about is the interaction between the CPU and the RAM. And the best way to explain that is with a calculator. So I'm going to open the calculator. Now, the calculator inside the system, it's saved in your hard disk. It's not running right now. But the moment that I open it, it goes into RAM. So right now, this graphical user interface, it's in RAM. And it's showing me this number pad. It's showing me the zero and the, and the arithmetic operations, etc. So what's going to happen is that the moment that I do 5, automatically this 5 has to be saved somewhere. Where is it saved? Well, it's saved in my working memory. So in my RAM, in my RAM, I'm going to have a 5. Then when I do the addition operator, then it's going to have also a plus. Somewhere in the RAM, it's going to have a plus. And the next thing is I say, okay, 5 plus 7. Then I will have a 7 also in my RAM. And the moment that I hit equals, What's going to happen is that's an operation. And who does all the operations? The CPU. So when I hit equals, what is going on is this 5 plus 7 goes to the CPU, of course, going through the motherboard. The CPU processes this operation and says, OK, what's 5 plus 7? Oh, that's 12. So it computes the 12, and it returns it back into RAM. So let's say there's a 12 right here. Once it gets the 12, then it shows it here on the GUI. Now, of course, there are way more things going on because even the fact that you have a screen and you're displaying a 12, that requires a lot of computations. 
But in essence, what I want you to understand is that you put stuff in working memory, things that you need that you might need to process. And when you process them, they get handed over to the CPU. The CPU does what it requires it to do with that information and it returns back the result back into RAM. And if you need to save the result for future references or for future use, then you go and save it back into the hard drive. In essence, this is what is going on underneath a computer. This is the stuff that you should understand. You will be working with RAM and you also need to understand the limitations of your CPU and the operations that the, your CPU offers so that you can program and know exactly what is going on when there is an issue. Of course, there are other components inside of a computer. You have a power supply which which uh, supplies all the energy required by the system in order to do all of this. You might have a GPU, a graphical processing unit, which might help you with the computations for graphics. Uh, you might have a sound card, etc. But those are, you know, they, they are they are used in a specific scenarios. But CPU, the RAM, and the hard drive, they are essential. Every computer has a CPU. It has some f and some form of memory, and that is the things that you, we should always be considered. I hope you found this video useful. In the next video, we're actually going to go in more depth about the how the information going between RAM and CPU looks. Because I said 5 plus 7, but how exactly does the 5 get to the CPU? How does a 5 look inside of a computer? How does a plus look inside of a computer? So we're going to be talking about, about this, uh, how is data represented inside of a computer and then after that, we'll talk more about what are, how does a programming language fit in into all of this. All right, if you have any questions, don't hesitate, leave a comment. And if you just got here, the first video, don't forget to hit like, subscribe if you want to continue on this video series of Learn Programming with C++. Peace out.